you have entered into the black hole of real estate, a place for news, tips, and strategies. Once you enter into our vortex, even if you wanted to escape it, you're probably going to want to stay. I'm your host, Ron Wysokarski, and this is the Black Hole of Real Estate. I'm at Commonwealth Aviation today with my friend Andy Clark, and we're going to talk a little bit today about what went into the vision of building this park, what it's like to make the, the right decision at the right time to fit the right amount of planes in here, and so much goes into this. And what I want to do is just let Andy kind of guide us today on what he looks for as far as tips and strategies when you're choosing the right place to park your plane, and if you're building it, a couple things that you might want to think about before you put the first shovel in the ground. So Andy, um, first thing, thanks for being with us today. Sure. You know, from what I understand, this vision was created in 1988. That's right. How did you get started with it? Yeah, thanks, Ron. Uh, yeah, it's great to be here. Uh, it's uh, Andy Clark. I'm the president and CEO of All Aboard Properties, and this is uh, Commonwealth Aviation. It's at the Daytona Beach International Airport. It's an aircraft storage facility with um, T hangers. That's what we're in right now is a T hanger. We also have some corporate 100 by 100 hangers and some 50 by 50 hangers. And as Ron said, we uh, built this property in 1988. And basically, at the time, we were looking for a hangar to store our own airplanes. My father and I, mostly my father, had uh, several airplanes. So we went to the airport director, Dennis McGee, at the time. and we were just gonna build a 100 by 100 hangar. And uh, Dennis, the airport director, had this large tract of land that uh, he suggested, he knew that we were in the self-storage business. So he said, well, why don't you guys build a larger aircraft storage facility and a self-storage facility? So we followed his suggestion and built this property. It's 130,000 square feet total. But, you know. So when you were designing this, I, I guess the first thing is you started with, hey, it would be a great place to have a 100 by 100 hangar for our own personal plane. And then it became something a lot larger, and if I'm correct, so you've got three, is it, on the 100 by 100? We have, yes, this, we have 300 by 100 hangers, uh, we have five 50 by 50 uh, foot hangers, and then we have like 23 <coughs> T hangers here on the property. Um, and so the T hangers, they, they hold like uh, up to a light twin engine airplane. We're in a uh, uh, Icon A5, uh, seaplane right now, and uh, uh, we have a Baron, um, a Beechcraft Baron behind us, which is a, a light twin. That's about the biggest type of aircraft that'll fit in a, in the T hangar. So, um, so anyway, yeah, that's uh, that's how it how it progressed. And this is uh, so we're at, we're on FAA taxiways, and we have direct access to the um, to the runway. Um, these uh, lease for. Uh, approximately $475 per month, and that includes uh, water and electric um, in the in the T hangers. And um, we have some availability right now for for lease, also if uh, if anybody's in need. Or if I just bought a plane really fast, we can just bring it in here. Yes, yes, absolutely. We uh, we we like to we try to you know maintain some sort of. Uh, you know, some sort of vacancy for, for people to, uh, for immediate use like that. That's fantastic. So you went from one hangar to 31. So just add 30 onto the list. What? I know. So, yeah. so I'm curious, where do you start with that? I mean, you've got the ground. I see that we've got a little taxiway out over here. You were on a slab, steel construction, sliding doors. All right, so you have a lot of choices in the beginning. What were the top two or three things that you had to get in place before everything else was possible. Well, it's uh, we're we're on leased land with the Daytona Airport, um, and uh, we used uh, Steel Master Industries uh, out of Edgewater, and they they uh, designed and, and built the uh, hangars for us. Uh, but basically, we just did a, a site plan that was approved by uh, Volusia County and. Uh, you know, my father uh, has been in aviation since the 1950s, and uh, he's been around, to, so we toured around and looked at other uh, hangar complexes like this to make sure we were designing it right, and it, it's turned out, turned out well. I noticed that we have, you know, block over here on the end. Is, is that common even to today, or is that, if, if you were rebuilding this today, hypothetically, would, would you do it similar with block and steel, or what, what would change? Um, 
everything has been been real real good these are these side rolling doors work real well you know a lot of people have bifold doors but these are just side rolling so you just push them open manually uh, the block on the on the ends was really just to protect uh, the ends of the building so they in case there were mowers or other vehicles ran, might have run into them we have an automatic gate here too so you can pull your car in and uh, pull your airplane out pull your car in your hangar if you're going on a trip so uh, so yeah everything everything's worked out real well for us um, I can't think of any any real changes um, we've made some we we at Ellaboard Properties, we try to do a lot of maintenance, and we we've through the years done different tweaking on on making sure the doors roll well. It's always a big item, and um, and so uh, we recently painted the the buildings, and we had to repair some roofs. So there's always there's always some maintenance that needs to happen, but but these have turned out well. You know, I I noticed you know what. As you said, you just slide the doors open. And I've been in a number of hangar homes, so we've got everything from bifold doors to these elaborate hydraulic doors that pretty much open up like a home garage um, at some great expense. And I'm curious, sometimes the simpler the better, the less they can go wrong with this. And I guess as a pilot, I guess the worst thing would be is like the door won't open, your plane's trapped inside. So, That's I mean, right. do you prefer a rolling door? Would you like a push button? Does, you know, what, what matters most to you as far as the door? I think the the ones we have have been great because, like you said, they're very simple um, and there's they're they're easy to roll. Um, we th I, I looked into getting an uh, automatic one at one time, but it just seemed like overkill, you know. And, and yet another thing that would have to be maintained. <laughs> so we try to keep our our maintenance uh, at a minimum if we can. Yeah, I think the convenience of the hydraulic is really nice until it doesn't open, and then right. you know, like then your plane is held hostage, I guess. Yes. yes. So, so I, you know, I see the block. We're we're on a slab over here. It's it, it's very basic, but yet it's very functional. And so I'm wondering if if someone was thinking of buying a plane, maybe as a pilot but doesn't own their own plane, and they don't have a hangar home to store it, and they're looking, trying to choose from a myriad of places. To store their plane as a pilot what are the two or three things that you think about when you store it is it the height the width the door what, what's important when you're actually leasing out a hangar well you mainly location like location 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 you don't want a, a hangar that's near your house or convenient to wherever your your business is so um uh, daytona airport's the closest to my house so that's you know this it's convenient for me um, and, uh, and then of course, just, you want, uh, good neighbors that, you, you know, so that your ease of access and convenience and safety, you know, safe place for your, for your, for your plane. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a expensive, you know, like belonging. So you want to, you know, make sure that you're comfortable with wherever you're keeping it. So, um. I'd recommend, you know, just for any, you think people can come tour it and if they like what they see, compare it to other places before making a decision about where you're going to store your plane. How do you choose the dimensions? I mean, as a developer, you chose certain specific dimensions. I'm guessing there was some math behind that. Yes, we all we used uh, uh, Steelmaster Industries experience with the, the size and making sure that uh, the light twin engine aircraft would fit in here easily. And if it's too big to fit in here, then you'd want to put it in a, in one of our corporate hangars. Um, but we have uh, Air America Flight School is one of our tenants, and um, they uh, also utilize the southeast ramp here at the Daytona Airport for a tie-down area. And um, we have ATP, uh, which is an FBO, a fixed-based operator that's right next door to us, and they sell fuel. and um, and so all the amenities are, are right here. Uh, but, but typically this, this, the advantage of your own tea hanger is, is you have control over it and it's a private area for you to, to maybe keep other things for your aircraft. In other words, if you, if you were to store, say at an FBO at ATP next door, then they would move the plane in and out for you, but you wouldn't have any um, private storage area for uh, maintenance stuff or cleaning stuff for your aircraft. 
place to keep your log books and stuff. So I, I have all that here, like a, more of a self-service storage operation rather than uh, full service. Okay, so, so you've got storage, almost like a little office area. So you, yes. So you can do all that while you're here if you're gonna spend an afternoon here. Right. Gotcha, so, so within this unit, so we've got what, water and electric service over here? Yes, uh, there's electric uh, outlets and lights in all the T hangers, and then there's restrooms in each of the buildings. Um, and then there's uh, if you a place to like wash off your plane outside, um, hoses are outside, so um, works out good. So tell me about the taxiway out here. Well, the the FAA built these taxiways, and uh, and so they they had to be make sure they're wide enough for large aircraft to taxi through. So um, I think it, it'll, it, a 60 foot wingspan could, could taxi in between the buildings, but it's a great place. We've really enjoyed having it here. My, my wife and I had our wedding reception in, the, in one of our corporate hangars. Uh, we uh, cleaned it all up and decorated it with a fountain and flowers and tables. And <laughs> it was a really a, a fun time. Um, so it, it makes, a uh interesting place for for having parties or events um back when we first built the the property uh dan quayle was the vice president at the time for uh george bush senior and he came to he was going to come to speak at our hangar facility uh to a veterans group uh but something happened and marilyn quayle came instead and gave a large uh, had a large audience in both of our corporate hangars so so anyway, it's... Um, well, you've had some interesting nice. events here. Yeah, yeah. So there's good memories in here. Yeah, for sure. So you had mentioned to me before we got in the plane here today that the uh, taxiway is going to be a little bit busy because the wind is a little bit different, a little bit uncommon today. Oh, yes, right. They're using the northbound runway here at Daytona Airport. So there's, uh, there's 12 uh, flight school aircraft waiting to take off with their engines running. So it'd probably be a about a 20 to 30 minute wait to take off right now because um, there's only one active runway. So uh, I'm glad we're not flying right now. <laughs> we spent a lot of time waiting, I suppose, right now. Yeah. It's good fall. Yeah. So when, on, on a morning when it's not as busy, I guess, you would come in here, you get your plane ready, I guess, do whatever, whatever that entails. And then you've got to uh, get a hold of who and how, so how, how do you get off the ground? Oh yeah, well, it's, well I, I can say that's a good thing about our facility here is it's all self-service. So you can come out 24 hours a day and get your plane out, pre-flight it, and then you would just call air traffic control, which you, you get your uh, flight clearance from clearance control, then they call ground and they would direct you to the, um, to the, uh, the active runway for takeoff. And then tower would, would let you take off and um, and so it's a we're a fully controlled airport here with a control tower, as most of the airports are around the Daytona Beach area. So that's good. So if someone was uh, thinking of getting a hangar, lease or otherwise, we've talked about a lot of the expected things. Is there one or two unexpected things that maybe the average person isn't thinking of that might be super important when picking one out? Um, I would say, you know, the, the lease term, you know, is obviously important, uh, who your neighboring, um, t co tenants are, you know, so that you're not blocked in, um, and, uh, making sure your aircraft fits in there. Well, um, those are all considerations that people might not think of, you know, when they like just to see just to make sure you have easy access and, okay. and without pro any problems to get your So the plane, plane fits, but maybe you can't get some of the other things in there. Yeah, like what if you're, if it's crowded and you can't get out at a certain time or whatever, sure. but, which we're, we don't have that problem here. Well, you've even mentioned the doors, you know, they, you know, they don't open to the full hundred feet. Oh, right. Right. Yeah. So, uh, the T hangers open all the way, but our corporate, our hundred by hundred hangers open to a 75 foot opening, which will, you know, take care of most big aircraft for sure. If you need 80 feet of clearance, we might have to do a little surgery on that, huh? Yes, yes. <laughs> okay. So you've mentioned a couple of times about the, uh, your, your neighbors. 
Was, was there a time or an instance, because you brought it up a couple of times, where there wasn't a good neighbor policy or maybe a story of someone who had a bad situation because the tenants near each other weren't getting along for some reason, or maybe just etiquette? Right, you just just uh, making sure if one person's coming in on the taxiway that the other person will let them by uh, so you're not blocked in. Luckily here we have multiple taxiways so you can turn left or right to get out of the of the uh, facility here to get onto the active runway. So, um, uh, so it's just a matter of how busy it is. Uh, at, at one time we had a couple flight schools that were on one one taxiway, and so that was difficult because they were so busy. But right now there's just the one flight school, so it makes it easier. So it sounds like doing that research up front. And I think what you mentioned was to, to get out there, see the space, and yeah. I'm not sure how you you were really bang on the door like, hey, I want to talk to you about your hangar, but I, you, you probably can ask some good questions if you spend some time out there. Sure, and we, ha we have an on-site uh, property manager. Uh, if anybody's interested in looking at our hangars, they can come out and tour them. Um, we're open uh, Monday through Saturday, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. And uh, AJ, the property manager, will show you around and, and you can see how the whole property works. So, you know, when, when somebody's leasing, let's say a storage um, facility for just their belongings. Is it a different process as far as certification or pictures of the plane or what, is it more involved? Um, yes. Okay. Right. We, we, I think what you're getting at is we, we also rent self storage here at this property and office space. Uh, but if you rent a, a hangar, you're in the airport operating area, which is a secured area. So you need to be badged by the, um, the airport. So you go over to the airport and get, uh, you have to uh, take a, a safety test and get a, a badge with a, a, your picture on it. <clears throat> so that's the, the difference when renting on this side of our property. What about insurance? Do you have to have, I'm sure as a developer and an owner, you've got certain insurance. They also have some sort of a insurance with them. What does that work like? Yes, uh, we have, we carry uh, hangar keepers, liability, uh, insurance on our our hangers, and then most of the people renting have um, insurance on their own aircraft. Yeah, lot to think about. Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's uh, you know, it's a great hobby, aviation. You know, it's it's something I enjoy. Uh, I did it with my father, and now I fly with my son. He's primarily the pilot on this aircraft, and uh, so we have a lot of fun uh, landing in the water at uh, Crescent Lake or Lake Harney or even in uh, seaplane bases around Florida. So uh, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. And it's been great spending some time with you today. I've learned a ton. Is there anything else that you would wanna, you know, let everybody know about your, your career between developing and owning and, and just enjoying the flight? Well, uh, I love our company, All Aboard Properties, and I just invite any of you watching to stop by like I said, we're open uh, Monday through Saturday and uh, stop by and take a tour of our facility if you're interested. And you know, you can check out our planes and, and our properties that we have for rent and uh, love, to, love to show you around. That's great. Well, I've enjoyed hijacking your son's plane for a little while today. I appreciate you being with us. Thanks so much. Thank you. Appreciate it.